Damn it. <laughs> What's going on, smart people? Yesterday's video was all about Paul Dirac, and today's video is totally not about Paul Dirac. It's going to be about Gauss. Today, I want to take some general Gaussian distribution and see what we can do with it. So I'm going to define this Gaussian g sub n as a function of x equal to the square root of n over pi, which is just going to be kind of a normalization thing. It's kind of secret. Don't tell anybody why I'm using this. e to the minus n x squared. Cool. I mean, it's got the form of a Gaussian and everything. It integrates like a Gaussian. It sure is a Gaussian. Uh, but let's integrate it. Now we know I've actually made a video on how to integrate a Gaussian before. If you're not sure how to do it or if you want to see how to do it, I'll leave a link in the description so that you can check it out. But the integral of e to the minus, let's say, ax squared with respect to x from negative infinity to infinity is equal to the square root of pi over a. And now what I want to do is I want to calculate the integral of this bad boy. So the integral from negative infinity to infinity of g sub n of x is equal to, well this is just a constant, this n over pi, so that's going to come out, it's root n over pi times root pi over n. which is equal to one. What? For any n that you plug in here, the area under this Gaussian distribution is always gonna be one. That's pretty crazy, but just wait, it gets crazier. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that that is a pretty cool result. Changing n doesn't change the actual area under the curve. The area will still be one, but changing n does change the shape of the plot. And I've taken the liberty of plotting out a couple cases in Python, which you are now seeing. And as you increase n, the shape of the plot becomes more and more steep. And as it turns out, as you take the limit, as n goes to infinity of this integral of g sub n of x with respect to x from negative infinity to infinity, this function that I'm putting in quotes here becomes the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the delta function with respect to x, which we all know is 1. So this is why the integral of the delta function is equal to 1, or at least it's one way of explaining it. And what's really useful about thinking of the delta function in terms of this is, you know, if, if we draw out our delta function real quick, here's our y-axis, here's our x-axis, we know that the delta function is zero everywhere except at the origin, and that it's infinitely tall, and then it goes on. But if we were to draw another function on top of it that we're multiplying by the delta function, let's like say this is our other function that's f of x, and we want to multiply this together and integrate, well, the integral of delta of x, f of x, dx, from negative infinity to infinity. Well, we're multiplying the delta function by our other function at all points x, but the delta function is zero everywhere, so here it's zero times this point, zero times this point, zero times this point, there, blah, 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 all the way down until you get to this point here, which is why when you integrate the delta function times a function, it picks out the point at zero. Just in case that little explanation was a little too hand wavy for you, I know that you guys are super rigorous, you're a group of intellectuals. Another way of looking at it is if we want to integrate from negative infinity to infinity of the delta function of x times f of x, we know by looking at this picture that it's going to be zero at all points except here, right? Which means that the only contribution this little thing is going to have is at the origin which means that at all other points x for f of x, it's all going to go to zero anyway, so we're only at least interested at the origin. We don't know what it is yet, but we know that that's the only interesting point. So this can be written as the integral from negative infinity to infinity of delta x times f of zero, right? Because all other points just go to zero anyways. Well, now that we're just looking at f of zero, we can pull it out as a constant, which is equal to the integral or times the integral of delta x dx, which we just showed that this is equal to 1, which means that this is equal to f of 0. You should have seen the look on your face when this video wasn't about Dirac, 
And then it and then it ended up being about Dirac. <laughs> Bye.